on one hour here. Uh, today is Friday the 2nd of June 2017. Just the latest on where we are uh, today with the uh, Paramount Chiefs um, up in Waitangi. Um, and as far as we are concerned, with our trip uh, itinerary to Britain, the idea was for the Chiefs to meet with the um, British Royal Navy on the Admiralty side of the Magistrate Court, uh, which forms the basis of a private contract uh, from the year of uh, 1830 to 1837, in the time that um, uh, one of the paramount chiefs from here, um, Te Rawaikato Whareherehere Manukau, um, went to Cambridge University and put the dictionary together for the uh, native language here uh, and um, with Kendall, Bishop Kendall, uh, formed the um, interpretation of the English and Maori language. Uh, from that he uh, put together the native um, title for the country here, New Zealand, um, in um, Edinburgh. Scotland, um, the Manukau Land Company or the Manukau Company was formed there uh, with that name Manukau over the country of New Zealand titles in the native um, transfer of um, sale and purchase agreement in this magistrate court um, with um, William Simons as being the lieutenant of the British Navy uh, in uh, Edinburgh. So that formed, really formed the um, um, continuing um, commercial trading um, on the high seas of Admiralty between Britain and New Zealand. Um, so we are going there to Britain to join that Admiralty title in the Magistrate Court in Trafalgar Square of the um, um, government um, uh, establishment um, with the uh, first Lord of the Sea, uh, Sir Philip Jones, um, Chief of Navy, uh, to join this particular commercial history of trading banks and making money uh, means of instruments inside that magistrate court. Today still we are practicing now that magistrate court in a native court on our marais. And we put that together um, in readiness for a trip to meet with the officials of the British um, government, um, Theresa May, Prime Minister. I believe that she will win the elections and continue to um, uh, join in dialogue with us, uh, the native, for all the native countries of the world that I am saying, uh, making statements here in front of the world that this flag we have is the real Admiralty King's flag that created all these instruments of the Magistrate Court in order to make money out of land and prized possessions of the King's Bench Native Grand Jury Trial Magistrate Court. And that's who we are. We are the other partner to the British Magistrate Court as the native side of the titles that have created these mortgage and bank instruments to make money in the bank. Okay. So what I want to do here is to let you know that our trip I've put together and uh, I will um, forward that uh, with the um, Paramount Chiefs um, Authority. They'll be writing with me uh, to the British establishment um, in order to meet them and to go through this historic process and relive the live situation of it is today inside the Education Department side of the West Building, I think it is, on the Admiralty Old Building House at Trafalgar Square, Buckingham Palace. So I'm putting that together as a 
um, a partnership in our claim to King William's inheritance and all that has been derived through this Admiralty flag here that I believe has been compromised by the British government and also the government of New Zealand and those who are using King William's authority and jurisdiction of Admiralty which is our contract. We are in a contract with him still after 183 years that we are going to re-establish ourselves in Britain as a dual government of a Commonwealth federal state government of Aotea New Zealand and Pacific Islands that we are hoping that the British will come here and establish themselves under our authority on our land as commercial land owners now. We have authorised our organisation here as being the Maui Crown King William IV Trust organisation to overtake the Queen Victoria Trust, which is our trust, and seize it back into our custody with the British military, Navy. The Navy in the first instance of King William the Fourth jurisdiction of Admiralty Magistrate Court Bank Creditor is our situation that I'm heading with these Paramount Chiefs to come to see you in Britain. Okay? So I'm going to run through this writ warrant which gives us the authority now legally to seize back all the lands and prized possessions, royal revenue that belongs to King William IV and his successor, King Ernest Augustus V and his son, King um, Prince Regent Ernest Augustus. Those are our oath of office to our paramount chiefs and myself, the sheriff, acting and speaking for those kings, King William III, King William IV and King Ernest Augustus V and his son, Prince Regent Ernest Augustus. I'm speaking for them because we are in a contract with the other two kings, King William III and King William IV, and St. Mary's Church Order and St. Patrick's Church Order, the eight-point star on our flag, is prominent in our native court of Admiralty magistrate court's authority, okay? So I'm just going to read through this 65 page warrant just to explain it a bit and I'll try and do this in the one hour or four gigabytes that can get as much as possible because people are watching. What I do here is um, uh, for the sake of the hapus in New Zealand and also with the native countries who are following us and in particular the, Na the Canadian natives who are watching us go through this first court case. Now I know there are a lot of people who are waiting for us for this grand jury native magistrate court uh, so we have to wait till we get one case through on Cook Street. We're going to seize 77 Cook Street. That's been ongoing for since 2008 and again in 2012 and now again in 2017 to seize that property with this writ warrant. We're also going to seize um, the treaty grounds itself and the TB3 blocks at Waitangi. I have the original titles of one house on the whole of those blocks here, the Utadonga title that Mohi Manukau has given to me and Hare Utadonga um, in the Confederation of the Confederation of Chiefs Tribes which I was in as well. So I've gone from that into the Maui Crown uh, Federal State Government of the world with dual governor with Westminster Government. Okay, so now I'll go through the first page. Um, here is the affidavit, written proof, video, fact evidence. Uh, Maui Crown Paramount Chief holds elodial native title, land title, owner, of Altair New Zealand. So that's the first page there. Okay, of this warrant. And I won't add to that. It's on Facebook. 
and on YouTube at the same time. And the second page is the affidavit of truth, videos, and statements of facts. We are going under deeds of truth titles against the opposite of deeds of truth, which is fraud and corruption titles that the Crown is running under. So that's affidavit of truth video as statements of fact there. That's page two. And um, you've got the watermark in the background of King Ernest Augustus V and his wife, um, Prince Caroline of Monaco, in the background. Okay, that's the watermark on our documents of title. The third page is the Citation Fact Evidence, date Saturday the 20th of May 2017, Auckland, New Zealand, Deeds of Truth of the Magistrate Lieutenant. William Simons, Royal Navy, 23rd Regiment, British Royal Navy, Crown, Manukau Company, Real Estate Share Company, registered in Edinburgh, Scotland, UK Native Paramount Chief, Te Rawaikato, Wharahere Manukau, Commercial Land Ownership, British Citizen of Cambridge in UK, England, of the Moriori Manukau Commercial Land Ownership Certificate of Title, Native land origin sold in England under the 1834 King William IV Admiralty flag ship jurisdiction in a foreign land as British UK citizens given to the 13 Paramount Chiefs 1834 Declaration of War, State of Emergency flag and British Protectorate title. That's who we are. We're coming to England as that on that page 3. Okay, so that's what I'm explaining there, and you'll notice that each page has got citation here. Maui Crown Manukau Company in England, in Scotland, Britain, UK, fact evidence, 20th of May 2017. These have been sworn into law. They are legal now on Titi, Marae, Grand Jury, Native um, magistrate Court. Okay? They've been passed. All these acts have been passed in that court. On that marae. Uh, so th the fourth page we've got this Manukau company legally registered in Edinburgh, Scotland created the Manukau Certificate of Native Land Transfer Deed of Title created in Scotland in Referefa Manukau in 1820 to 1830 period, King William IV reigning monarch sovereign, 1830 to 1837 period. So that's page uh, four there. Okay, so I'm just explaining as much as possible before the video runs out. And page five is much of the same of the history of Mohi Manaka and myself putting all these documents together to make this title um, valuable in um, Scotland, um, Edinburgh, uh, to claim that title with the Paramount Chiefs I'm taking over. So here we come to page 6, the last of the evidence of Mohi Manukau and myself as putting all these titles together. And on page 7 we have the signatures here. Of these paramount chiefs I have chosen and they have signed it to go to England and I'm taking them to um, England, London and also to Scotland um, to the land registers office and the real estate company that was the Manukau company. <clears throat> so the date of judgment order was the 20th of May 2017 at Titi and Waitangi Marais. Details of land describe the land subject and judgment order attached. My Crown King William IV Paramount Chiefs of New Zealand Pacific Islands. So I've got all the titles of the land we're going to seize straight away with this writ warrant and thereafter the rest of all the native countries in the world back into the British title, ownership with us. 
um, to the High Court judge in Auckland, New Zealand, Britain and the world, to Sir Philip Jones, Lord of the Sea, British Royal Navy, to Prime Minister Theresa May, Westminster Crown Government, to President Prime Minister of 250 state governments, that this goes out to, and the notary public seal of Manahi um, Mohini, Manahi Parapara Mohini is the um, Justice of the Peace here in New Zealand that notarise these documents. Okay, so that's, that's um, the signatures of the four main chiefs, uh, paramount chiefs, Bundy Waitai, Kingi Taurua, um, and um, um, Manahi Parapara Mohini, and um, also Heruini Karaka, or Selwyn Clark. Uh, Selwyn Clark is more the register on the British side of the Clark name as being one other British citizen here as partner to us, the original surname native. So that's the uh, Mohini, um, uh, Justice of the Peace stamp for the courts in the Queen's Bench Court from the King's Bench Court. The King's Bench Court's seals are along the top here. They're all in colour but this is in black and white and um, you can see it online in colour um, at some stage. So the properties that we have we're seizing are here, okay, including Cook Street. We're seizing that property this time, page 8. That's on page 8. Um, so these are legal now on that marae and on Titi marae and also on uh, Waitangi marae. Now here we have the page 9 here. We have here um, Busby, James Busby, and also so James Busby, and um, no, that's Clendon, sorry, Clendon, and um, Palmari. Sella Palmari of the native lands here in New Zealand, up north, and Captain James Reddy Clendon here, the buyer, on behalf of the British Crown and King William IV, sovereign monarch. Okay, so we have King William's eight point star here. That's the bank and all the commerce made in the world and his seal and his crown and his eight point star of St. Patrick's Order. And here we have Te Rawaikato, Whareherere Manakao and also Hongi Hika in England at the time of 1822-1830 with King William IV from 1830. Tiki Tiki. Church, my church in my land, as being the first birth certificate title to the land here at 1831. That is the overriding title to this country and to the whole world under this magistrate court and native title. Okay, so here's the 1831 map that is our evidence. Site Citation evidence here, pointing straight to this church at 1831. All the other years on this map is 1837, when King William IV died and Queen Victoria took over in 1837. So I'm saying the birth certificate of my own Wānoa was the first legal instrument of bank on the stock market instrument of land ownership ahead of the flag at 1834. That's the land title, dead title, of money making in the Magistrate Court and the birth certificate is the live person or man or woman that the British gave the Manukau's the birth certificate you'll see here with 1830 on it as being I was here. I didn't see you around. So that's that title, and you'll see it on this page 10, again. You'll see um, the map here, clearly shows 1831. There's no argument about it with the properties here in New Zealand. You cannot, cannot contest this title of birth certificates on our land in Tiki Tiki of the church there, there's a picture of the church in Tiki Tiki and the village and the marae 
my marae and the mountain Hikurangi, which is connected with the birth certificates in um, uh, Whakawhiti Ra, which is on its way to Tiki Tiki from Ruatoria. And Hikurangi Mountain is more towards Tiki Tiki, where my own Wānua Marae is, and all the most of the Urupas or burial memorial stones are in that Marae are my own family with that first birth certificate. There, I've got a picture here, 1831, of an arrow pointing straight to the church on the hill and the Marae opposite in the paddock. Okay, so that, I'm telling you people, this is a true story that I'm saying. The proof here is that my family were the first in the whole world with a birth certificate title used as instrument on the stock market in New York that King William IV set up in his 50 years of Navy from Britain, Westminster, UK. Now, he was king at 65 years old. Fifty years before that, he set the stock exchange up for my family's birth certificates to go straight on him. Okay, you got that? That's what I'm saying. Because no one could have come up with something better than that, other than the Manukau birth certificates itself at 1830. So those two go together, the Manukau, the Wānoa, and the Rogan judges, and as birth certificates. Okay, got that? Now that's the title to New Zealand. We're taking it over with these four paramount chiefs, including King Itaurua, his family, and his um, king, Edward, and Queen Victoria is his direct bloodline to that Queen Victoria Trust. We are seizing that back into the King's Bench Trust, the Moai Crown King William IV Trust, private company, okay? So that's the, I've got a lot in VP number there, fee simple title to the whole country under that Manukau Moriori title in Scotland, Edinburgh. Now there's our whakapapa here. I'm going to explain this carving here. Um, in full of its parliament here in New Zealand, the native parliament under the Waikato chief's original parliament set up with um, Te Rewaikato Wharaherehere Manukau and the Moriori and also um, Kafaru the Giant of Waikato. So that's the Wānoa Manukau Whakapapa or genealogy and title to the four pillars on this carving and also the four main tribes up in Napoli. Now they all understand they are the leaders of this carving. That's what Mohi says. The one on the left hand side here is Napoli with the big eye of the Atua God. Okay, it looks after the main four tribes. So Napu is in charge of that and this flag. Okay, they put the flag together. They did. The other ones came after. They don't count. Only the 13 chiefs count in this title to Britain. The other chiefs who signed is the Australian New South Wales title does not come into this. So you have to stay right out of it, all you people. Now here is the um, birth certificate here of the Manukau at 1830 saying I was here and I'm saying at the East Coast in 1830 and 1831 with the birth certificate there I was here on that picture okay so between him and the Wanoas we have the titles that matters to the British King of this flag of commerce and the magistrate court uh, here we have the um, deeds of the title of Refere for Manukau, clearly selling the lands in Auckland because he had a legal right to sell it from Britain, not from here, from Britain. Okay, so that's page 14. I'll just whip through the pages quite quickly, but I just want to give you an idea of the
title is there. That's the memorial title to this country here. That's the um, four main tribes. I won't explain it. I'll do that in another one. But um, it just shows the parliament here. And the um, British and all the states coming in here into parliament. This is what we're setting up now for the British to come here after we go and see them. And this other one here is all the Fano and the Hapu, not the Iwi, nothing in the Iwi in here. And the Iwi is not, not in here. This is just straight trading, straight out to the 250 countries will be coming in here into this parliament at Waitangi. Okay, I've already got plans to build a new, whole new marae up there. There was two billion then. And I still have those plans on my Facebook sites. So that's that, and here on, we're going to page 17, which continues on, on the affidavits of proof, fact and evidence, and on to the map again with um, Te Rawaikato, Wharaherere, Manukau here, and Hongiheka with the um, spear in his hand, and he did all the military side of the uh, conquering lands here in New Zealand. So uh, that's, um, that's that. And also we're going on to the Taka paper here. The um, agreements here were supposed to be on Taka paper, but the government here got rid of them. And the Littlewood Treaty, which was an American, straight into the stock market, supposed to be on these Taka papers that Clinton had put together, this government here stole and put their own ones and we're, we're going after them with that. We're using this Taka paper and this original Clinton title as being the British um, jurisdiction and not the New South Wales New Zealand jurisdiction. So we've got um, the Queen here and Royal English and, and John Key and all the Panama Papers fraud here in this country. They're taking them straight into the court, into this native court on our terms, on our jurisdiction of this flag, right above them. And Chris Ferguson, the biggest crook in this country, Hiding the fraud. No more. Paper, Panama paper, bank fraud. We're, we're telling them straight in their face that they are pirates on the high seas and we're going to put them in jail with this way. Now here we see 1833 and 1834. 1833, King William acknowledged that this country was founded by Captain Cook and in 1834 the flag went up. This country was now a independent country and it had a flag of New Zealand at 1834. It still is under our terms. The government here has put theirs and we're going against them with this title, with this flag. They took out the 1835 which is not our contract. They took out their own contract with their own Maori patent rights. We have our own Moai, King William IV, patent rights with Britain direct. So there, that's the proof there. And also on page 23, we're, we're down to more facts here, with the arrow pointing to what I'm saying about those statements that are being made public. And all the answers are there. Um, the, the Crown has written the answers. It was for you to see which one suited yourself. Now there's the writ of warrant, writ, writ of possession, demolition order and possession order from Duterte in um, Philippines. We're going to be applying the same writ warrant here under those acts and that comes from Britain. We have the right to use it ahead of him and the gold that's hidden in his land soil belongs to us and our trust, the Queen Victoria Trust. All that gold that's there belongs to us. We're seizing it with the pound notes. Okay, so we're on to the pound note here, the trillion pound note that I'm charging. All the debtors here in this country, and including those 43 people that stopped me on Cook Street. I'm not worrying about the Maori marshals because they are not in this jurisdiction. They're in the 1835, which has nothing to do with the 1834. Sorry about that, but they they belong to that side, the Dito side. And Chief Pomare and his sale and purchase agreements here. Uh, so that's that one. I'm just 
try and get through this before we run out of time on this video. Um, so we're going along further to page 26 and deeds, the receipts. Here you can see quite clearly Refere for Manukau selling the land himself. And on it goes. Um, I'll go along to page 28 and 29. I've got myself here as representing those kings. And rightly so. The chiefs here in this country have accepted, I'm talking about Hapu, have accepted now this is correct, true and correct. There's um, King Ernest Augustus V and Prince Caroline of Monaco as being the current King of Britain, UK, Hanover and of the New Zealand Pacific Islands. That's him right there. I've changed Jamie and taken her photo off the pound notes now. I'll remove all her photos because it's not relevant anymore with her beside me, for her family has chosen that decision, so I have no hesitation but to remove her from everything that I do. Now there's the eight-point star clearly on this flag belonging to this king and not any other king who is sporting this eight-point star. I have no legal right to be wearing it you'll get a bill on your head. Anyone who has no authority to use our contract of this eight-point star and St. Patrick's order to do anything other than pirate our title and our authority of inheritance to all this fortune the King made. Okay? Now, um, Kingy and I have signed this statement claim uh, here. Just him and I, right there. Okay, I use his electronic signature, and that's what Jamie had issues about me using her electronic signature to make agreements. If she only left the trust in me to sign for her, then she had no business in all of this to know what to do with it. And contracts was contracts, and everyone leaves things to me to make decisions, right decisions. And she failed to do that, so it cut us right off altogether. Decoration of war flag, that's what it is. The decoration of war flag, this flag is put in place as a means of a state of emergency, emergency to seize all the land of a government. And that's what we're doing here in New Zealand, seizing all the country off this government because it is a threat against our livelihood against our national interests, against our land interests as commercial land owners now. It's against a threat against our natural resources and our way of living and the way we want our country to run. The country doesn't belong to the government. They're only there to look after it and they're doing it for themselves and their own financial investment interests that we're going to seize the whole lot of them forthwith. So that's the country title that we're seizing the whole lot back. And there are Maori who are wanting to take this back and that back and that. They don't have the overlying title. So they can't. And I had a bit of a mishap with one of my friends last night on the phone. Um, and Matua Karanga and Charlie Hoheba going about his business trying to get this and that and forgetting about going to... Waitangi Marae and Titi Marae got booted out of there because his fraudulent ways of doing things got caught. He got caught crooking his own Maori people. There's no Maori in here. There's no Maori in here. He's holding all the Maori stuff. And they don't come anywhere near the Maui stuff and the Moriori stuff. Okay? So these are just additional information of uh, King William and uh, also um, here. Yeah. I'll just whip through the rest of it now. Now this is our East Coast title and the Urupas or burial grounds that have been decimated by this government and the New South Wales government. You're getting a bill for wrecking my Urupa or burial ground at Lotton Point Motel and built it right on top of my Urupas there. You're going to get booted out of there. People, I've warned you that we're coming to get our land back. 
they're taking it off you because you have gone and dug our ancestors out and threw them somewhere. This has happened on One Tree Hill as well. And put Campbell there and threw the Mohi Manukau's Moriori chiefs into the flour mill where Helen Clark's house is right on top of the flour mill in Mount Eden. Okay? You did the same thing there and at the airport, Auckland International Airport at Ihumato. You pulled all the grave sites of Mohi Manukau's ancestors and threw them away in containers, a big 40 foot container, and threw all the skeletons in there. I saw all of that happen, and you're going to get stung for that. You're going to get stung. We're going to seize everything, everything from you, each and every one of you. It's going to be seized off you. Now, here's the signature on page 37. I just want to explain to you that there's Jamie's signature there. You see, I always put her signature on all the documents because she's supposed to trust me. I think her family has driven her away from me, but I've crossed her name out right there. All right? She's so stupid not to listen to me, so I don't listen to her anymore now. It's over, Jamie. It's over. I don't want to go back into that anymore. Us, we're gone. And I'm on my own, okay? So I'm put suspended. And you'll have to apply it to the manager of this business for a job now. You had it good with me, but unfortunately my patience has run out. There's King Itoru. Always put his signature there. You see, he trusts me to put his signature there and my signature there. Okay? So. <clears throat> That's the Nuku Tere Waka in Rangitukia on 7B, Haho 7B block. That's some owner in there on that block. And so I'm going to sort that out with the chiefs there. And um, that's the flag that was designed in the first place, but I won't go through that because that's all history now. And um, the Whakapapa of our family, uh, Toi Kairako, down to Tikahaki, to Wānua. We come through Tikahaki from Toi Karaka through Tikahaki to Wānoa. And that's the Rarotongan side or the Cook Island side of the, that title. That's that title. That's not the Taishan side, that's my mother's side of uh, Cook Islands. Okay? And the Cook Islands was there before my Tahitians came from Rapa Nui and Raiatea Island. So I'm saying the, the Moai has come a little later, but it's still significant in all our male side dominant over the Pacific Islands. The Moai has the precedence of memorial right through the world. That's why they stole them in England and France, Belgium, New York, Washington DC, Chile, and New Zealand here in Dunedin and Auckland. They stole a real Moai, which is my own one or I'll speak for myself. Anybody else making claims to it has to write all of this up to it and fit themselves where they think they fit. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I'm speaking for Moai and its crown on his head and its history whakapapa to my family in the islands. Okay, very important to get the memorial side of titles right before you start talking about any piece of land. That's how it works in the Parkia world or the British world of titles, you must have memorials to go with the, the, the land, the same as what the Freemasons have memorials that they've borrowed from the natives that are not the land. You see, that's where their titles go belly up. Now we've got Roma Fakata there, we've got the titles in Gisborne and, and to um, joining up to Toi Kairato, but um, Rabataka will look after all of that for me. And he's very uh, good because his family is in the St. Mary's Church in Tikitiki and the Reverend Wanua and the Reverend Ka, K-A-A -A and Reverend C-A-R-R, Britain. That's the connection there. The Reverend's inside that church and the Rahui Marai is my title to these lands through the birth certificate and the church register of births, deaths and marriages 
certifies that as true inside that Tiki Tiki St. Mary's Church, 1831, and the native court in Fakafitira below Mount Hikurangi Hill towards Tiki Tiki and in our boundary area of Daro Kumaram Range and Tiki Tiki um, Marangaro land and Awatere Marae uh, land and the Marangaro land, land itself with the Marangaro Marae and also um, that's joining us to Britain straight there Okay, I'm telling a true story here, and so this is the rest of the Whakapapa here, and here on this page 43, there's a motel in Rotten Point, built right on our Wānoa Urupā, Tahanga Wānoa's Urupā, right there, and the Pākehā deliberately did that before 1840, more like 1820s to 1830s, the woods came there and the woods are going to lose all that land because I'm in charge of all that lot now, not them anymore. The Crawsons have run away because they knew I was going to go there and take it from them anyway. Now those people that are there now are going to lose it. And uh, their names are in this book, Warren. They'll have to go back and get their money. I'm warning them on this video that this video is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. It's citation against anybody who doesn't have a title to stack up to what they've bought as a bad title. You have bad titles. One bad title is because all the rest of the titles are bad, right through the world. Now that's the church in Tiki Tiki, St. Mary's Church, right there, with our Wānoa birth certificates at 1831 as being bond on the stock market. Okay, right there. 1831, first church in this country from Britain to register birth certificates because we didn't fight against the British. They didn't take our land and that's why we've got most of our land, 93% of the land still belongs to us. And all the others lost their land because they put up a fight and lost everything. Okay, so that's, um, that's that and also this is um, Okiato. Uh, native court, the first native court in New Zealand, that's that title, to the land with this 1834 flag. The first time this flag went up, it gave independence to this country as the flag of New Zealand. This was flag of New Zealand from 20th of March 1834 to the 6th of February 1840. Right? Six years this flag was flying as the flag of New Zealand until the rogue pirate government from New South Wales and New Zealand took over, but we still have our flag as the flag of New Zealand, if they play up, because they are playing up now. Theresa May, this government is rogue. It is rogue and it is fraudulent. It's running a fraudulent business and it's our business to audit it. We're going to audit it because of the Panama Papers, okay? And John Key and his bank, his Rothschild Bank, is the fraud and corruption in this world. Full and detailed list of Panama Papers leaks. Who's involved? John Key is right in the middle of that. And he's still sitting there, twiddling his fingers to think he's going to get away with it. There he is in the wanted column as thug, pirate, there. And it's graced all over the world for you to see that he's surrounded by debt and the power note on his head. Okay? He's got this power note on his head and the two chiefs right there. He owes these two chiefs for what he's stolen and defrauded the people of New Zealand and the Paramount Chiefs. Now there's the first Scottish title here from Edinburgh, right there. Okay, and this is the Rick Warrens here from Detroit in the Philippines. We're applying to this Rick Warren the same procedures. Okay, we have the right of the sheriff's return there, of the amounts that we are putting down as being nobody's business. This is nobody's business but the king here, his wife, Princess Caroline of Monaco, and us, his partner, to King William. Okay? Successors. We are the successors. We have the part of the partnership with the inheritance, wealth, 
it's our business. It was not his business as the king of Britain UK. It was not his contract. It is our contract. As I'm saying to the Paramount Chief, it is our contract. All of this page from here on is Wolfgang Strutt and Karen Hodes that have been mixed up with the Philippines and the gold that's missing. She said there's 1.5 million tons of gold. I'd say there's more like 2 million tons of metric tons of gold missing out of our Queen Victoria Trust. That belongs to we're still the beneficiaries of that trust. Karen Hodes, you can come and check our records here and the British know it's our trust. You can no business in it. You can't make rules while a contract's in order. This contract is still running. Right? It's still running. It's nobody's business. And that's all your work there. I'll put it here as cited evidence. And we have Ed Giesman, my nephew here with the Moai in Dunedin, South Island with the crown on his head. You see, the white man put this Moai in Dunedin for those Pakeas down there, those white men from Britain, as their crown. That's our crown. They're playing with our titles because the Freemasons and the Scottish gathers information that belongs to us and puts it on their titles. And that's our title. I'm going to make a deal with the Freemasons that these are our property. This pound note is our property of King Tafio from Waikato and Te Rawaikato Wharaherehere Manukau in the Manukau Company, Scotland, Edinburgh. Okay, we're going there to uplift our title with these paramount chiefs and me, the creator of all these documents in our own way of writing law. Okay, so that's current news there. And it's just about time for the video to run out in an hour. Um, time is full. And that's the uh, global debt facility of Karen who is there. And then it goes to the second last page. And the last page is from her as well. So the two last pages is Karen who is. And the very last page is the pound note and King Ernest Augustus V. So that's our king to put into Westminster when we go to Plymouth County Court and put him in there to go from that court on King William IV's property, estate land, in Plymouth, straight into Westminster as the King of Britain, UK, Hanover. Okay, you can't put another king there because there's one already there. So that's what I want to say in this video. Um, and I hope you're getting a lot from it and the people who are watching me, uh, especially here the hapu, not the iwi, the hapu, who are following us um, and how we're going to seize this land in Cook Street. We're going to take it this time, you landowners. You know you're crooked. You know you're going to get caught. You're going to get caught because I'm telling the truth. Nothing but the truth, so help me God. Deeds of truth override your deeds of fraud and corrupted title, bad title, not going to work anymore on these lands that belong to us. That's what I've been telling you all along and you've ignored me. The cost of ignorance and silence is lock in jail. That's what you're going to get, locked up in jail. I'm going to make sure you get locked for a long, long time and lose all your businesses, including Bailey's Real Estate, you lose all your businesses. We're taking them over. We're going to take them over as a cost for your ignorance and your silence against this title. You have no title. You have no commercial value title to stack up against this. None of you. Okay, that's all. We'll see you later. Bye for now.